Uh, good morning, Rotarians. Thank you for joining us. This club meeting is called to order. Shortly, I'll be sharing my screen and leading us through another fun presentation to direct the conversation. Periodically, I'll bring the screen sharing down so that we can see each other's beautiful and friendly faces and have more dialogue. Family and friends are always welcome to attend our club meeting, so don't hesitate to invite someone like your local butcher. Feel free to speak out as you would as an, in an in-person meeting, but if you're not using your microphone, be sure to put yourself on mute, or maybe I will do it at the cost of a club fine. Welcome everybody to the Fortuna Sunrise Rotary Club meeting for January 13th of 2021. That's volume 28 of my presidential year. We have an amazing Rotary Club and I am so thankful to be a part of it. And with that, we'll do introductions of guests. This morning we have Charlie Zavaglia joining us. Thanks for joining us, Charlie. Yeah, anytime. Thank you so much for having me. Um, actually, thank you to Christopher as well from Tri-Counties Bank. I appreciate the invitation. Yeah, cool. Glad to have you here. And thank you, Chris, for inviting people. He invited somebody. So keep this momentum up, everybody. We love it. And we also have Diana Rios from the Noon Club and our guest speaker this morning. Good morning, everyone. Oh, and I'll do one quick look to see if there's anybody else. I think that's our guess. All right, back to the matter at hand. Okay, so at this time, we typically be doing the flag salute. Since this meeting is virtual, we don't want to see each other's bellies as we stand up and hear maybe some disjointed, you know, because of the lag of, of the internet. It, talking to space, why not a little bit of American history lesson? Did you know that on this day in 1968, Johnny Cash performs live for the second time at Folsom Prison in the prison cafeteria, which was recorded as the album Johnny Cash at Folsom Prison. I never knew it was in the, in the cafeteria. That's pretty interesting. And there was a lot today, actually. Today in 1957, whammo, begins production on what they called the Pluto Platters, which changed their name to Frisbee in June of 57. Following the name change, sales rocketed as the Frisbee took off as a sport rather than the original marketing as a toy. And um, we find examples of the Frisbee um, and many other vintage toys and toys uh, section showing up thousands of examples from uh, 1920 to the year 2000. So the Frisbee from Whammo, of course. And the inspirational message this morning, we'll turn it over to Walt Chakamini. Walt. This is from Edmund Burke, British statesman and philosopher. The hottest fires in hell are reserved for those who remain neutral in times of moral crisis. Love it, love it. Thank you, Walt. I like that, Walt. And we'll move it over to a screen share here and we'll go to the four-way test. Um, and let's see, Jeff Nelson this morning. Is <laughs> you already forgot who you ask, huh? <laughs> I, had look my, I had to look at my notes, sorry. <laughs> Jeff, would you do the four-way test, please? The four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you so much, Jeff. Perfect. Good job. Okay, backpacks. This week we have Debbie and Jim Scaife, as well as Joanne Sinner. And January 20th, we have Buster and Lori Garrison, as well as Dawn and Sue Finch. Uh, Steve, is there any uh, additional backpack stuff? How are we doing as far as filling a couple of those open spots? Hopefully good. There we go. I couldn't okay. unmute there for a second. Yeah, we're doing fine. Uh, there's a, there's a, only about three or four open spots between now and the end of the year. So 
let's get it get in there and sign up so we have some rotarians on there <laughs> there you go there you go and and just for new members and guests and stuff backpacks for kids is a, a partnership with food for people where we stuff it's not backpacks but paper bags full of food to uh, help out with people with food insecurities over the weekend maybe the the most amount of food that they're getting is school lunches and breakfasts and so these bags of food go home and they've got a little something to keep them and their family fed over the weekend so it's a really and cool we're thing. Up, and we're up to about 145 bags now 145 yeah. bags outstanding wow there's a huge need so yeah. thank you so much for everybody that's um joining in and i know a lot of times there's one or two names up there but a couple other rotarians usually come and help too so you know you behind the scenes folks you know who you are thank you so much Okay, it's time for the artist of the week. So being an art educator, every week I am sharing the art of an artist and you'll notice my virtual backgrounds, usually a little clue to who the artist is going to be. And this week we're going to look at the artwork of Monami Ono. All right. So uh, artist Monami Ono is, is a formally trained 3D animator. But the Japanese creative has, has made a name for herself as a sculptor. Instead of clay, wood, or other conventional materials, um, however, Ono has uh, opted to specialize in an unusual medium, cardboard. Specifically, Ono uses discarded Amazon boxes to create her collection of jaw-dropping detailed cardboard sculptures. I wonder if she gets a little cut from Jeff Bezos. Um, <laughs> <laughs> here, here we've got a, a beautifully illustrated, uh, uh, you know, fast food meal there. It looks like a, what, a Big Mac, some fries, everything made out of cardboard, a gigantic uh, watch. And if, if you look really closely at some of these details, they're just, it's just amazing the level of detail that she gets in this, that Heineken can. I love how she ripped away the, the top layer of the cardboard and let the corrugation show through to create a little bit of a texture and the cup of noodles with the little cardboard fork. I mean, my goodness, just so cute, so beautiful. All right, whoa, hey, there we go. Um, using recycled paper products, Ono crafts an eclectic array of cardboard art. Some of her most impressive sculptural works of art are high-spirited high creatures and monsters, including a miniature Godzilla. You see that on the left there. Realistic representations of food and drink, functioning shoes, elaborate vehicles. Each piece is composed of multiple parts of intricately pieced together uh, <clears throat> cardboard. And it allows Ono to impressively achieve various textures, patterns, and features, giving a level of detail apparent in each piece up of upcycled art. This simplicity of Ono's tools may surprise you because uh, she makes all of this. All of her striking sculptures, she uses only a pair of scissors, a standard box cutter, a ruler, glue, and masking tape. So fantastic work here. Like I said, there's Godzilla on the left and the dead center. We've got a detailed shot of the back of a DeLorean or of a nice uh, sports car that was featured in Back to the Future. On the right, we've got this gorgeous saxophone all made out of cardboard. And it's just, I don't know, it's mind blowing for me what she does with cardboard. So. With that, the last slide I usually call on a Rotarian. This morning, I think I'm gonna call on Heck Wood. I don't think you've played this game. Heck, are you there, my friend? Reluctantly, I am here. Reluctantly, you're here. Well, you know, uh, critique, discuss, interpret, talk about the type of medium. Uh, this is uh, Monami Ono's uh, cardboard schoolgirl outfit. What do you think about this, Heck? Well, Simon, the, you're, you never cease to amaze me in the quantity of adjectives and verbs that you come together with when you're describing all of this. I don't, I don't know that any of us could quite uh, d describe as, as thoroughly and eloquently as what you have seemed to have pieced together with hours and hours and years and years of experience. So flattery will get you everywhere, Heck. <laughs> you're off to a good start. <laughs> So um, yeah, let's t talk about it. What's going on here? What do you see? Well, I was hoping she would uh, she would have used some of the corrugation of the cardboard, but it looks as though she has chosen not to use the corrugation technique here. Um, oh. So she, 
what was that Diane? I heard something, but um, uh, I mean, the way she made her, her, um, her dress, um, I assume that's what that is a, as opposed to a kilt, but it could be kilt-ish in the way that she's wearing that with her long socks and her bedroom slippers. Yeah, and those bedroom uh, slippers are made out of cardboard as well. Huh, I mean, that intricate level of detail that you've talked about is just uh, absolutely amazing. And uh, I mean, the wrinkles that she put in her shirt, I, I don't know where the iron was, but uh, she didn't iron the cardboard to the extent that uh, one would think, the, especially the way she ironed her kilt-esque skirt thing. Um, but she made the cardboard match the tones of her skin also on her arms and around her neck. So they, they really blend well together. Ooh, uh, woo. You, yeah, you're on fire, heck. Flattery and then a really good description of what's going on there. I love it. I love it. it those, those wrinkles that she created, I'm assuming she used a little bit of water. Sometimes when you do uh, uh, origami with, with paper, you can add a little bit of water and you can, you can do some more intricate like folds and creases and stuff. That'd be my guess on how she, she created that wrinkles, but really good observation. I like how you talk about tonal qualities. I think that was pretty outstanding. I'm going to let you off easy. How about five bucks? Hmm. Can you hang with that? Do I have a choice? No, you don't. But I, I love to. I love to pretend you to give you. Give me the choice. So, <laughs> all right. Well, I can always increase it if you'd like. Um, you know, she. As far as the wrinkles, she could be using the the packing paper in, in there as well because I mean Amazon <laughs> gives away so much packing paper. Uh, no, we'll we'll definitely keep it at five. That was excellent work. Thank you, Hack. Everybody, give it up for Hack Wood. Thank you, sir. Okay. Well, let's do, because the art theme and because it's so much fun, let's do one last game. And I think I'm going to call on Penny for Joe. I think you might have played this maybe once before, but maybe not. Penny, are you there? I'm here. Thank you. Yeah. That was amazing artist. Good job. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, hopefully I get you guys inspired and, and you want to go home and, and check out more of their work. Because there's, there's always a lot and, and sometimes it's hard fitting it into three slides. Um, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, we're going to look at sculpture for this. Once again, we're looking at little different types of sculptures here. But I've got three beautiful, brilliant sculptures here um, from several amazing artists, one of which is Pablo Picasso. Um, <clears throat> and um, I want you to guess which one of these sculptures sold for the most money in auction. That's it one, two, or three. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh. I, you know, yeah, what things buy for is just beauty in the eye of the beholder. Correct. Only it's <laughs> doesn't really have a linear uh, logic, I don't think. Oh, That's so I, this game. <laughs> having said that, this is a total guess. Um, okay. I will guess number one. Number one, that is, and I'll probably butcher the pronunciation on that. That's Homi Adon by Alberto Giacomini. Not spelled the same way as our beloved Walt. And you're correct. That's <gasps> it. You won it. No oh, one for say. you. That sold for $141 million. That sculpture on the left. Yeah. And the, the middle one there is Rabbit by Jeff Koons. That sold for $91 million. And on the right, the lowest seller, uh, Tete de Fim by Pablo Picasso, and that is $29 million is what it sold for. So great guess. Great guess, Benny. All right. Let's see here. I don't have a full-blown recognition uh, this week. Usually I'll, I'll draw a little illustration or character of one of our club members, and I'll talk a lot about him. But I think I'll open it up here for any boasts or brags or sharing anything you'd want to do things that you want to talk about, happy things happening. Come on. There's got to be some good in the world. Anybody? It's Greg, Greg here. Greg. I'd like to throw in five bucks for my neighbor's birthday. Oh, awesome. Five bucks for your neighbor's birthday. That's awesome. Whose birthday is that? Who's your, who's your neighbor? Oh, oh. <laughs> is there any guilty admissions here? Maybe somebody who's got a birthday in the house? Mary's not here to find you normally. Yeah, somebody might have had one yesterday. Somebody might have had one. Oh, and you guys live pretty close to each other, don't you, Heck and Greg? Yeah. I'm, I'm just kind of going out on a limb here to say maybe somebody who spent some time on a submarine. 
No, no. So it's been my, spend some time on the golf course. On the golf course. Okay. Who, who, who could it be? Anybody? Nobody's fessing up here. You know, the penalty is far worse if you don't fess up. Heck, it's you. How do you define fessing up? I'm the one talking. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about somebody else. So, heck, it's it was your birthday. I mean, do you care to share? Well, how was it? How was it? I heard it was Eli's half birthday too. Yeah, Did that's you true. Sixteen, heck. Uh, something around there. No, my body does not feel sixteen. Uh, -uh. <laughs> definitely not. So yeah, I survived, but barely. Good, good, good. You do anything special? We had this massive party. It'll probably be a super spreader event. <laughs> that sounds like no, we, no, just the three of us. Hey, <clears throat> some of your most favorite people in the world. What a better, what a good way to spend it. Well, I think the typical fine for a, for a, a birthday is just five bucks, right? Unless you want to throw in a little extra. Five to the foundation. Five to the That's foundation. Right. All right. I think it was a big birthday though, wasn't it? heck a big birthday a milestone how do you define milestones 46 a milestone oh okay no. okay yeah that is a milestone <laughs> every year is a milestone apparently yes yes <laughs> cool anybody else any anything i i heard a couple of us were at a yahtzee tournament oh john sapper's got his hand up how quick little story for you yesterday i had a interesting and and almost a surreal experience i uh was asked to take down a close friend of mine to Stanford for a medical appointment of his. And, and uh, driving back yesterday morning in the commute to San Francisco, we jumped on 101 to head up north. And usually where that is bumper to bumper traffic, um, for 15 miles, I could have zigzagged across all four lines and lanes in just an S curve all the way up without hitting another vehicle. And then going through 19th Avenue, uh, almost no traffic. And this is at uh, 8.45 in the morning. Wow. And then as you enter the, the bridge to come north, usually you have to fight to get into the traffic to go across the bridge. As I merged on the bridge, there was no car within 400 yards behind me the, that was coming onto the bridge and only maybe, maybe 10 cars on the bridge itself. This was just unbelievable to see how that city and that Bay Area and South Bay is shut down. I mean, shut down and I, while I was there, I talked to three or four different restaurant folks, you go in and take, get a little takeout. And um, uh, they have much stricter controls. And uh, I wish I had invested in a plexiglass company. Never seen more plexiglass in my life. But I asked the, each of the restaurant folks, and there's four of them, four different ones. I said, well, I said, this is extraordinary extraordinarily difficult for for you how are you how are you survive in this and three of them said uh we think we're we're close to being done be closing the doors so this is it, it, you and frankly you look at our area here and you look at eureka it is boom compared to that bay area uh it it, it just was surreal uh, what's going on there. So I thought I'd share that this morning with you. Yeah, that is surreal and sobering in the same. Uh, thanks for sharing, John. Do you, do you want to make any kind of financial contribution for that chair? <laughs> well, you know, he's only $5 away from the Century Club, so maybe he can just pay his toll. What, what do you think about that, John? Hit the Sensor, Century Club this morning? Ah, that's, 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 that's be a nice uh, solution. Okay. Awesome. You know, and I don't know if I've got, Ross. let's <laughs> ring that bell, huh? Boom. Yes. Yes. Somebody else. I heard somebody speaking up. No. Okay. 
Simon, I'll, I'll just give you a quick update on the um, situation at our local hospitals. Please. Um, we're, we're definitely impacted by the rest of the state being full. So um, historically, when we had a real critical patient who had complex needs, we'd be able to transfer them to one of the universities. And pretty much every hospital in California has been full this past week. And um, we've had to rely on partners up north in Oregon um, or Washington. And our ICU is full. We have um, patients now in an expanded surge ICU in Eureka. They opened over the weekend and that's already full. And um, just Fortuna's hospital, we were trying to transfer a patient down last night who needs surgery and there's no more beds. A lot of the nurses have been called out uh, or have been home recovering after their vaccine shots. So e even though our county COVID numbers are some of the lowest in the state, we're still feeling the impacts of it. So. Yeah. Simon, I have one interesting experience from a client who I, uh, who is doing contract work in, in Canada. And when he, he was home here in, in Humboldt County for Christmas and went back to do his contract work in Canada. And Canada has a mandatory 14 day quarantine period when you get back there. And so they, so he and his team are locked up in, a, in, in their rooms and they have been contacted multiple times by the Canadian Mounted Police to make sure they are in fact quarantining and they're not even out for a walk or anything. It's just interesting in a different country how things are treated differently. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's been interesting to hearing all the different exchange students kind of sharing their stories of what's going on. We're, we're definitely very blessed to live where we, where we are right now. It kind of the Redwood Curtain has kind of shielded us from things that are going on uh, more aggressively in other places. So thanks everybody for sharing. On the, on the, the topic of, um, restaurants too maybe our guest speaker can share a little bit of what she's doing locally too to help out some of the restaurants here in our neck of the woods um anybody else before we hand it over to our program chair something they'd like to share out okay i'll pass it over to aaron dunn our program chair to introduce this week's program oh she's so excited she's got her her screen already sharing Aaron Dunn. Good, good morning. Thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce Diana Rios, a visiting Rotarian, a past president of the Noon Club, who is in the middle of or beginning her 12th year at the Fortuna Business Improvement District. And I don't know if you've noticed the new flags on, on Main Street and some of the side streets on the, on the poles, but it is just one piece of a new campaign that FBID has started uh, to encourage commerce here in Fortuna. And I'm gonna let her talk about that new campaign. Thank you, Diana, for being here this morning. Thank you, thank you for having me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just um, do a, a brief introduction for the people that don't know me. Um, okay, but I don't know how to advance this. There we go. What is FBID? Uh, we're a nonprofit organization that helps with economic development in the city of Fortuna. Um, we're funded by our business community and it's matched by the city of Fortuna. Sorry, my notes are down because I've never done the whole screen, screen share thing. Uh, we're, so we work with the city of Fortuna for economic development and um, we are excited to um, have applied for a grant um, with the, hum oh gosh, Simon, how do you next? Just next, okay. Um, we applied for a grant with the Humboldt Lodging Alliance. Um, in, Feb uh, in March, we submitted a, um, in March we submitted an inquiry to the Humboldt Lodging Alliance um, because we knew that the hotels were shut down completely. And then in April, we discussed with them options of ways to help our hotels and our restaurants. And in May, we submitted an, a grant, a full grant application. It was originally for $110,000. And um, they had about $150,000 available. And our hope at that time was to spend about $60,000 in buying hotel vouchers and then giving those away 
um, throughout the next 12 months from um, July 1st through June 30th of this year. Um, that was their original hope. Um, they came back and said, don't spend the money with us, but market Fortuna and the Redwood Coast out of the area and promote our community so that way we can um, get the tourism traffic and not just help our hotels, but help our restaurants and help our business community. And so we resubmitted our grant for $60,000 um, and that $60,000, I'll break it down in what that money is being used for. So we split the campaign into four um, areas. Um, the first was um, the tourism aspect of the grant, um, which we applied for. We needed to stay true to who we are, um, which is the economic development part, which we strongly feel that economic development part, uh, part of economic development is tourism. Um, so we did a, our major um, chunk of our funds, 70% of it, went to Get Lost and Find Yourself. Uh, it's a campaign that we're marketing out of the area um, and we are um, promoting it four hours north on the 101, four hours south, uh, excuse me, five hours south on the 101, over Highway 20 and then up um, I-5, five hours north and five hours south. So we're, we have a pretty big span and we've selected zip codes. We have 20 zip codes that we're marketing Fortuna and the Redwood Coast in and I'll talk about those ads in a little bit. Um, and those ads started October 28th and will run till February 28th with our Get Lost and Find Yourself campaign. Here's some of the ads um, that we're getting the most hits on. Um, our hiking trails, our Redwood Drive, um, we are no fools that Fortuna doesn't have the most, um, you know, business or uh, tourist attractions, but we marketed ourselves as this kind of hub, um, as a great place to stay or safe. And um, it's a great place to stay 20 minutes south or 15 minutes south. You can be in the Redwoods and 12 minutes east. You can east, you can uh, west, you can be at the ocean. And so... Uh, those are part of our marketing campaign pieces and we promoted our um, attractions that we have in our town and um, which is these feet this these two pictures are right at Roner Park and our hiking trails and the Deep Boat Museum. Sorry these pictures will drive Simon crazy because they're a little bit pixelated um, but we talked about um, the ocean and um, the ocean fishing um, as we have um, as an attraction, as things to do here. Um, a lot of um, local Fortuna business owners have home-based businesses where they have boats um, out at Woodley Island, and so we wanted to make sure to feature that. Um, biking trails as well, um, which is a big attraction for outdoorsy people. Um, and then, as Aaron said, we did, um, as part of the campaign, we wanted to tie the campaign back into Fortuna, even though we're marketing it all out of the area, um, when people got here, that they would see something familiar. Um, the downtown merchants had talked about replacing their banners along Main Street um, for the last few years, talking about one, creating ones that said, uh, eat, dine, explore, or uh, excuse me, dine, explore, and shop um, in downtown Fortuna. And so we um, kind of, partnered with them a little bit and mostly we came up with uh, our own that were tourism related, small business related, and then um, uh, tourism related, business related, and then um, a recruitment aspect of it and asking people to do something. We're, and all of them we're trying to ask them to do something unless it's related to lodging, but um, stay, explore, um, hike our redwoods, bike our redwoods, those kind of things. And the second aspect of our campaign was doing business organically. Um, a big question is, what does doing business organically mean? Um, we say doing business organically is the course of gradually or naturally developing your business. Um, that is our um, business recruitment and retention. It's one of our business recruitment and retention components. Um, in, in the ads that we're promoting out of the area, we have four ads, oh, excuse me, and with the Get Lost and Find Yourself, we have, um, excuse, we have 20 or 10 different ads and 20 different zip codes. 
um, that are promoting and they're talking about different things, hiking, biking, redwood trails, um, the ocean, the Ill River, kayaking, some of the things that we offer. Um, for doing business organically, we have four different ads um, running talking about uh, our community, um, that we have uh, buildable land, that we have um, vacancies. Um, uh, most cities right now have tons of vacancies. Um, but we are unique in the fact that we have buildable commercial land in the city of Fortuna um, that has freeway access. We also have um, land um, in city limits um, that, that are smaller. And we're able to partner with some of um, our business um, property owners in, in connecting them. So that's part of our doing business organically. We talk about um, our uh, manufacturing companies like Il River or uh, the uh, Ill River Brewery, we talk about um, Humboldt Vodka, we talk about other um, Humboldt Bottling Company, which is a local bottling facility um, in agriculture proper, um, agriculture products. And so we talk about just different products that we have out of the area um, to give people the opportunity about thinking about relocating their business um, to Fortuna while promoting our businesses out of the area. Um, everything directs to our new website, and so I'll show you that in a second. Um, so here's just some of the ads about doing business organically. Um, the far ad on the right, my right, your no, my left, your right. Um, it's just a big, it's kind of a cool shot of a Main Street Fortuna. And it's getting the most hits on doing business organically. Lots of comments, people saying that they want to come see our town. Um, it's nice because it features some of those trees, that sunrise, and it just makes me think about Sunrise Rotary and wanting to add more trees downtown. Um, and then just some of our local products, our cider. Um, and then we did um, marketing flags for Main Street as well, or the banners for Main Street. And here's some of them. You know, we're really proud of them. Um, we, we partnered with um, the county on a um, shop local campaign that will be our evergreen um, ads. They'll run um, throughout the year um, we are saying choose Humboldt, shop Fortuna, choose Humboldt, shop Eureka, choose Humboldt, shop Arcata. So um, we made sure to put choose Humboldt on here to really go along with what everybody else is marketing. Um, and then um, safe secluded small town, um, 15, oh, and I should say uh, doing business organically, 15% of our budget um, went to that campaign and then 15% of our budget went to Safe Secluded Small Town. Um, Safe Secluded Small Town was our relocation campaign that we added um, as part of this campaign. And um, talking about our, um, there's something for everyone. We have great community organizations. We have great local community events. We have a lot of small town pride. Um, and so we promoted that um, in, we have four ads of that running in um, 20 or 18 different zip codes. Um, sorry, excuse me. And so here's what some of those ads look like. We partnered with our local realtors on this campaign and our property managers. And so, I'm oh, sorry, some of these you are- compensate really Scott Downey for the use of his house to get that picture? Yeah, is that really Scott's house? Oh, oh, for the property. No, as Simon just trespassed when he took the picture. Uh, <laughs> that's how we roll. You can pay my fines for the rest of the year. How about that? Perfect, I'm all over. <laughs> Uh, so Safe Secluded Small Town was our relocation campaign. Uh, it's uh, the far ad on the left hand side with the blue background is getting the most hits out of all of our ads. Uh, people wanting to know how they can get a house like that and where Fortuna is. So it's been a really nice on recruitment. Prop the problem with that is, is we don't have a lot of um, houses on the market, um, but we've been able to connect and people from out of the area to our local realtors through our website. So that's been really nice. Uh, and then the ads that are surrounded to that. Um, these ones were kind of inspired by the downtown merchants. They said, we really need to tell people to do business. You know, we have tons of hair salons, tons of food. So we, we wanted to make sure to add like pamper yourself. Um, we have a lot of massage places in town and um, a lot of options for um, relaxing and uh, as a place to um, just enjoy, you know, we may not have a lot of 
you know, outing adventures other than hiking trails in the Redwood or, and the Eel River, but we do have a lot of options to really take care of yourself. Um, and we have a lot of Airbnbs actually that um, get a lot of people that are just um, looking to get away and our town um, is a nice place to do that. So um, here was our safe secluded small town ads, or excuse me, banners. And then the last component of the whole thing, um, which all of our ads, all three, all three of the campaigns that are marketing out of the area are directing everyone to get away um, to the getaway giveaway campaign that we're doing um, in partnership with the Humboldt Lodging Alliance. Ten thousand dollars of our of our grant needed to be spent in um, buying hotels, inviting people to come, uh, buying hotel rooms, inviting people to come here, and then giving them stuff, whether it was food certificates, buying local products. Um, and so that is part of this. Um, and so we're, we've are we been doing that. We've had over 300 entries in the last couple months um, from people outside of the area. And we, it is not open for Humboldt County residents, um, but we're asking that if you know people that live outside of the area that would like to come visit, um, we would love for them to be a part of that. Um, we are giving away 14 different packages that include ocean fishing trips. We just gave away our ocean crab trip because we needed to do it during crab season. Um, but everything else will be given away on March 1st, and they have until June 30th to redeem their um, package. And that includes um, horseback riding along the Eel River. We have a couple packages, kayaking with Lolita Eric um, down from the Redwoods, um, through the Redwoods and along the Eel River. And then we have um, an ocean fishing trip for rock cod fishing out on the ocean with Steve Helton, which is a Fortuna business owner. And many other just excursions where we're giving people night stays and we actually wrote um as like a concierge we wrote like okay so today you're gonna pick up lunch at blah 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 and then head down the 101 and enjoy the redwood coast so we've got this whole package is all set up for people um and then we're giving them um food certificates gas cards we're giving them um, the hotel stays as well as like little thank you for um, visiting and then we're doing the follow-up with a um, a survey at the end um, everything can be found on our website we have a new website as part of the grant we wanted to update our website um, and we were actually able to secure another grant just last month um, for about eight thousand dollars which covered the cost of the website cost the staff time um, and which was really exciting and so we've updated our website everything can be found there including the enter to win um, on the get lost and find yourself tab so that talks a little bit about or a lot about sorry I'm a talker um, about the um, the marketing campaign that we were able to secure through the Humboldt Lodging Alliance and I I think that's all I have related to that. I can talk a little bit too about um, what we're doing and what FBIT is doing um, in, in the COVID world. And so everybody knows a little bit about that. I did get a question this week. How can FBID, um, how can you do the grant and still do your service to the local business community. And this grant allowed us to hire staff. Um, we, were, we had planned in February to get rid of all of our office staff, um, except for me, and we were gonna get rid of, we had a part-time assistant who worked 12 hours a week, um, and the plan was to let her go. Um, securing the grants, we were able to um, hire Bernie at 30 hours a week. And then because we just got that last grant, it covers Allison's salary, which is 12 hours a week. So that was really exciting. So we've been able to maintain FBID's work and add work, add work and add stuff for our community. So I feel really good about the, um, the products we've been able to put out. Um, but I would be interested to see if anybody has feedback or questions. This campaign does end on February 28th. We will do all of our giveaways on March 1st, and then um, the follow-up will be on that, um, making sure as we are booking as the concierge and booking hotel rooms, making sure that packages are, um, you know, given to the correct winners and that we're doing our part to promote Fortuna in the Eel River Valley and the Redwood Coast.
So and that's all I have if, if anybody has any questions. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Diana. Uh, Diane, I have a question. First, first a comment. I want to want to applaud you on what a great program that you're doing. It's good to see advances in marketing for, for our Fortuna area and going outside of uh, our region to attract. And the reason I say that is my brother belongs to the Humboldt Lodging Alliance. And you would be amazed at, uh, you know, John Sapper, you said that people are not in the Bay Area and you can't see them. Well, you, surprising fact is people are bringing their families up to our area and they're camping out in in motels for sometimes 10 days at a time because they want to get away from the masses so they're going to the, the little towns to get away and yes that sounds like they're bringing uh, the coronavirus with them um but it's just uh human instinct to get out of there yeah i guess and i'd like to say something about that too so what our ads are right now is promoting our area and then we're actually starting in january um to start to change the conversation about come visit and um, what are you doing this summer what are you doing this spring come visit our area so our our messaging right now has been just telling people about our beautiful area and what we have to offer and then now we're doing that and in our getaway too we've said like don't come don't come yet like we want it we want you to come after march when we can have a better assessment on it and um, so that's one of the big things that we've been doing and um, i did want to say too um it felt really uncomfortable we got the grant you know we started talking about the grant in march april may it felt really uncomfortable to ask people to come here and um, in october we thought we would be done with all of this so when we started promoting the area we really did believe that um that we would be done with COVID, and so um changing that message has been, you know, it, it's been a little bit different for us. But um, the Humboldt Lodging Alliance is also running um, ads out of the area promoting um, the standing, they have a standing tall campaign. And then the Humboldt Convention and Visitors Bureau also started their ad campaign. And City of Eureka is also doing their ad campaign. So we're all doing these ad campaigns out of the area. Um, right now to really promote our area for when it is safe to travel. And, and we're getting those questions a lot. Is it safe to travel? Can we come there? Can, will will a, hotel, a hotel accept us? And we're saying no, but check with us in March. So that's what we're able to do. So thanks, Ross. Yeah, it's been nice. And, and the, I believe the Chamber of Commerce is working um, with their tourism and marketing on possibly doing something um, as well, which will be even better because then we can just keep promoting our area and do a bigger pot of funds, which is really exciting. Diana, what about the the grants that right. you're helping the local businesses out with? If you could just touch on that really quick. Yeah, so on December 26th, I think, I don't remember exactly what day, the state of California announced that they were um, releasing 500 million dollars worth of small business grants for um, small business owners um, and those range from five thousand to twenty five thousand depending on um, your gross sales and um, we sent out um, a couple emails to some businesses to all of our businesses that we have email addresses for um, and when we were able to send those out uh, we started getting feedback on um, helping restaurants and women um, and minority business owners and um, those were the businesses that we were hearing back from right away and so we put together packets and we actually have submitted 20 i think we've just completed the 26th business application through our office where we're collecting the information scanning the document and then submitting the applications for the businesses we have 14 that we're completing today today is the deadline um which has been really exciting so we'll have about 40 businesses that fbit has you know directly um been in contact with and then we've had about 10 businesses that we know of that have submitted the application with our assistance on their own so that's pretty exciting um, to know that about 50 businesses um, that we've been in contact with have submitted for that small business grant um, through the state of california the california relief grant so um, it's been a lot of work the last 10 days has been kind of crazy and their websites keep crashing and they keep sending us new ones um yeah heather knows heather's with sbdc so she's getting and she's getting our frantic calls or not heather maybe specifically but everybody else's i'm like the site is down again 
Um, but it does feel good to be able to help our businesses. Um, uh, we did go into every restaurant and said, um, if you haven't submitted your application, we're not leaving until we get your documents because we want we want to help you. Um, and I think every restaurant in town has submitted their application either through our office or on their own, which is really good. Excellent. <clears throat> Thank you. Anybody else have any questions for Diana this morning? I just want to piggyback on aid that's available for businesses and Dan is available for this. Uh, the PPP round two opened up this week, uh, funding from the SBA available for local businesses. So work with your banker to facilitate, find requirements um, and get those applications in for round two. Yeah. <clears throat> Chris, you got muted there really quick. Did you catch everything? Catch your local banker and then it stopped. Oh, yeah. Well, you apply through your local banker. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. And then, you know, these these grants and and all, all these funding opportunities are what are going to keep our, you know, our businesses moving forward. And maybe I mean, it's it's not going to take all this thing out. But if it if it can help them out just a little bit, make it a little bit easier to go through these really tough times, <clears throat> the more that we can do to support those businesses we can, because. Um, they need it right now more than I did want to just say one thing on John Sapper's comment about the restaurants being closed um, down south and it being a lot more restricted. Um, they have a lot more enforcement. We don't have a lot of enforcement up here. Um, that has been a, the chamber and I have um, worked partners on that and trying to see what we could do to get some more enforcement. Um, but it's countywide and so it's really hard. Um, but our businesses just reopened. You know, our restaurants went into red a couple of weeks ago, reopened. It was like a, a deep breath. A lot of them were calling our office saying, if we don't get to reopen, we're not reopening. And so then we went into red, which was really exciting. And then to go back into purple has been um, this roller coaster of wave. Um, and so my anticipation, if, if we can get some more support for our, um, for our small business owners, we'll be able to survive. Um, and But the reality is a couple of our businesses in the next few months will start to close. Um, and it's just, it's been a year. It's been a year of it and they're depleting their savings or they're refusing to deplete their savings because they just need to have something to survive on. So as everybody knows, it's the same story in every city and every community, um, but we will start seeing some changes. Um, the chamber and myself have been working with, or the FBIT office have been working with the city of Fortuna on partner on ways to partner. Um, and it looks like we may have um, another resource um, coming up in the future um, to help small businesses. So that's um, that'll be good, um, but it, nothing is set in stone yet. So we'll see. Excellent. <clears throat> Thank you, Diana. Diana, I just went to your uh, website. It's fantastic. I didn't realize that that had come along that far. That's that's really nice. Thank you. <clears throat> awesome. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, club. We'll do our club drawing here and then we'll get everybody out on their ways to their wonderful Wednesdays for the rest of the day. So without further ado, a ticket and then a ball. Let's see. What do we got here? What do we got? Who's going to be Angela Johnson? Are you still with us? I see. I see her screen saver there. You could win untold fortunes. Untold fortunes. I am still here. I can't wait. Woohoo! All right. We've been drawing the gold ball a lot, so who knows? Let's keep, let's keep up that momentum, maybe. Good shake. And what's it going to be? What's it going to be? It will be. No, it's a craft talk ball, unfortunately. Uh, so craft talk or $25 fine, which would you prefer? I know. Bar bar well, do the 20 $25 fine. $25 fine. Hot dog. All right. We'll take it. Thank you so much, Angela. That, that sounds like incoming presidential material right there, I think, right? <laughs> Awesome. Uh, you, you'll hear enough talking from me in the future. <laughs> yes, we're looking forward to it. Uh, awesome. Anybody else, anything before we part ways this morning? Um, Charlie, thanks for showing up this morning if you're still with us. Yeah, you are. Cool. 
Hey, it was nice to see you. Thanks for coming by, Diana, as well, and the rest of our wonderful club. Uh, we we uh, getting together every week is just a pleasure, and it kind of takes takes a little bit of the pain of what's going on in our world right now. And so let's keep doing it. Let's keep active. Uh, people that signed up for the alternative fundraiser for the seafood boil, you should be seeing an email from me in the next day or two. Okay, so be looking for that. Have a wonderful Rotary Day. We'll see you soon. This club meeting is adjourned. The lovely sound of the bell. Yes. Bye, everybody. Bye, Simon.